Good morning. It's time for Monday Morning Manor from the well. And I am trusting that many of you would be able to join me this morning and share in this wonderful moment. So for the last three uh, weeks or sessions, we've been looking at what is your love quotient? What is your capacity? What is your ability? What is the quality of your love, the love that you give, the love that you receive. And I believe that, you know, we, we make a do and, and we emphasize what is our intelligent quotient and we should, and that will get you maybe a job and get you, you know, in certain places. And what is your emotional quotient, your ability and capacity to bounce back and manage and regulate your life and your emotions through adversity and different circumstances. But I think we are underestimating that the truth be told, our love quotient is as critical as our intelligent quotient or our emotional quotient, if not more, because love is what will hold all things together. So good morning. Thank you, Apostle Brent Hale, for joining me. Please let somebody know that you're watching the Monday Morning Manor here from the well. And so we continue our discussion on what is your love quotient. And I want to begin this morning by reading a few verses of Scripture from God's Word. First, I want to read 1 John 2, 9-11. to And kindly put that for me, 1 John chapter 2, 9-11. I'm reading from the Phillips version of the Bible. Anyone who claims to be in the light and hates his brother is in fact still in complete darkness. The man who loves his brother lives and moves in the light and has no reason to stumble. But the man who hates his brother is shut off from the light and gropes his way in the dark without seeing where he's going. To move in the dark is to be blindfolded. Listen, I, I want us to get on this, on this broadcast today that I cannot love and you cannot love except we are walking in the light. Except we are walking in the light of our relationship with God and except we are walking in light of our relationship with ourselves. Okay, so if I am walking in darkness, don't expect a whole lot of love <laughs> that's going to come from me because it's God's light and God's truth that is going to enable me to love you as you deserve to be loved. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 14. This time I'm reading verse uh, from the ERV. Colossians 3 and 14. Together with these things, the most important part of your new life <coughs> is to love each other. Did you get that? Not the list of do's and don'ts. He says the most important part of our walk with God is to love one another. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. So let me give you the, little, the, 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 the same verse, Colossians 3.14. Again, kindly put it for me from the message. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even tempered, content with second place. Whoa, quick to forgive others. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment Never to be, never go without it. In other words, you and I are encouraged that we must dress up in our spiritual garb, our sp spiritual regalia every single day. But the most important piece of garment we can put on is the garment of love. Because love is what holds everything in place. Love is what holds all things together. A physician, <laughs> I just came across this quote that I thought, wow. A physician once said that the best medicine for humans is love. 
Someone asked, what if it doesn't work? He smiled and said, increase the dose. I suggest that today we need to increase the dosage of love in our lives and in the lives of those around us. So if I'm going to increase the dosage of love, then I must first of all have an ample supply in my own life. I cannot give what I don't have. I cannot love you if I don't love me. I like uh, Brené's Brown, Brené Brown's uh, quote, uh, definition of love. Are you ready for this? Brené Brown's uh, definition of love. She says, we cultivate love when we, when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. And when we honor the spiritual connection that grows from that offering with trust, respect, kindness, and affection. Wow. So when I show up, not afraid, not suspicious, not second guessing, not assuming, I just show up. I just choose to be. When I just show up and allow my most vulnerable, powerful self to be seen and known, that is love. Wow. How often do we hide? How often do we fear not being liked or accepted in a certain clique or in a certain group? And we don't understand that is, in essence, a lack of love, a lack of feeling safe and secure and feeling that we are deserving of love. She continues to say, love is not something we give or get. It is something that we nurture and grow, a connection that only can be cultivated between two people when it exists within each of them. We can only love others as much as we love ourselves. Whoa! Listen, I, I know that you and I need to understand our love quotient can be measured in our ability to love ourselves. You know, you may say, I love my children unconditionally. I love my wife. I love my husband. I love my grandchildren. And that may very well be so. But how are you loving on you? You want to know how much the persons, the significant persons in your life love you? Watch how they love themselves. Watch how they speak to themselves. Watch how they treat themselves. Watch how what you know the compassion or the lack thereof they give to themselves brené continues to say shame blame disrespect betrayal and the withholding of affection damage the roots from which love grows wow i would like to suggest that many of us have damaged root have damaged roots because there's shame, there's blame, there's disrespect, there's betrayal, there's withholding of affection, and we are basically poisoning the root of love. We are basically destroying the capacity from which love can now grow and blossom. She continues to say, love can only survive these injuries if they are acknowledged, healed. And that's rare, right? So when I have injured you, when I have shamed you, betrayed you, when I have been unkind to you, if I want love to be restored and revived in our relationship, I must take the initiative to ask for forgiveness, to apologize, to own my wrongdoing, not to blame, not to justify and so sometimes we're in relationship with other people and they never accept the fact that they have done wrong. They'll never acknowledge that they have done wrong. Good morning. God bless you from Germany. I love it. We have Lansing, New uh, uh, Staten Island and Germany on with us this morning. Great. Let someone know you're watching Monday Morning Live from the well. So we continue to talk about self now, uh, what is your love quotient? And the truth is, I want to say self-love is so important because so many of us don't realize it, but 
the way we treat ourselves, the way we speak to ourselves really is self-loath, not self-love. And we will sabotage all our relationships if we are not healthy in our self-love. To, so to the, degree, to the degree I love me, to the degree that I care for me, to the degree that I have compassion and kindness towards Sandra is to that degree that I can love other people. And I know, I think to be honest with you, help me here, Dr. Brent Hale, the man of the word. I believe sometimes in the church, we have been, um, um, uh, what's the word? We have misunderstood the whole concept of self-love and self-care. So it's almost like, you know what, hide me behind the cross. And you know, if I'm following Christ, I must deny myself. That is scriptural, but it's, but it's also true that if I don't love and care for myself, I cannot love and care for others. Listen to what Leviticus 19 and 18 says. Please put that scripture. You shall not seek vengeance and you shall not harbor a grudge against your fellow citizens hear this and you shall love your neighbor like yourself i am yahweh i am jehovah love your neighbor as yourself wait a minute here i must love you as i love myself but what if i don't love myself what if i am always criticizing me what if i'm always speaking negatively towards myself what if i don't treat my body right what if i don't rest and eat well and exercise what if i you know don't honor the law of the sabbath and take time to have quietness and and reprieve and respite what if i don't do vacations and what if i don't know how to enjoy life what if all my relationships are toxic what if i am not doing a good job at loving me what are the chances that i'm going to be able to love you i suggest nil nil if i'm going to love you i've got to first love myself if you are going to love others you must first love yourself treat yourself kindly show yourself kindness show yourself compassion Show yourself care. God bless you, Diane. Galatians 5 and 14 from the Passion. For love completes the laws of God. All of the law can be summarized in one grand statement. Demonstrate love to your neighbor, even as you care for yourself. Listen, all the laws do not commit adultery. Do not covet your neighbor's goods. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might. Come on. And your neighbor as yourself. All of the commandments can be summarized in this grand statement. Love your neighbor even as you love yourself. I like it how it's read from the Amplified. Same verse, Galatians 5.14. The Amplified. For the whole law concerning human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, you shall have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. I highlighted do things for their benefit. You want to know what your love quotient is? Start examining your motives for doing what you do. Some of us are generous. Some of us are, are, are super generous with the extension of ourselves and the giving of ourselves. And there are some of us who have no boundaries. We never say no. We are always doing. We are always doing. We are always serving. And the truth be told, we're not always doing it from a right place, a correct place, a pure place. I may be generous to you because listen i don't want you to reject me i don't want you to stop loving on me i don't want you i'm afraid that you will walk away i'm afraid you won't be you know my best friend and so i will do things but internally i am kind of grumbling i'm kind of like not happy that i'm doing this thing i'm not happy that i'm having to do all of this stuff i'm not doing it out of a pure place so you want to know your capacity for love 
measure your motives measure how much you are doing what you're doing from a very pure place some of us will never say to our spouse or to our loved ones i love you and walk away i'm gonna say hey my nephew i love you but i'm expecting you back to say what i love you auntie <laughs> i see you online <laughs> so you know what we've got to examine our motives what's driving what you do there are people they are giving what they can't afford <laughs> christmas or birthdays there they they buy the most expensive gifts because listen if i buy this for my child or my spouse or it is, they will know how much i love them but the truth is i have another three years before i can pay the 350 dollars off on my credit card and it becomes now 695 dollars is that love do you understand that we can really stop, pause, and ask ourselves, why am I doing this again? Why am I having this barbecue for 40 people when I know the truth is I only want a quiet evening in my backyard with five close friends, but I'm afraid that the other 35 will hear about it and they won't talk to me after. We're not motivated for the right reasons. We include people because we don't want them to think that we are excluding them. We, we do things because we want to be liked or to be accepted. We do things because we want to be seen in a certain light. We have an image we want others to see. How about if we just present our true selves? How about if we just said, this is who I am? And the truth is, I am going to know how much I am loved when I show you the real me. When I allow my powerful, vulnerable, whatever, all of me to show up and you decide, I love you just as you are. How about that? How about letting your spouse know you, your child, your parent, your siblings, your coworkers, or your best friend, whoever it is that you are close to, how about showing up? Start today. I feel like a daily exercise that we should all engage in is to start loving on our inner child. Every single day, that inner child who perhaps didn't quite get what he or she should have gotten in her childhood, in his childhood, in his boyhood, in her girl girlhood, if we didn't get what we should have gotten as children, we are grown and adults now. We can, when we find ourselves saying certain things to ourselves and being unkind to ourselves and treating ourselves a certain way, we have to pause and realize, whoa, I must now be kind to that inner girl. I must say to Sanja's inner child, you are loved. You are deeply loved and you don't have to perform to be loved. You see, I kind of grew up knowing that if I perform well, then I get the applause and I get the praise. And so sometimes I have to check and see whether I am still performing so I can be accepted, still performing so I can be loved. And that's not pure and that's not genuine. That's not authentic, right? So I have to start speaking well to that inner child. I start being kind to me. Come on, watch what you say to yourself because you are listening. Don't say, I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. I'm such an idiot. Oh my gosh, the things we say to ourselves. How about saying, you know what? What you just did wasn't really smart. There's a difference. Don't define me by what I do. Don't define me by my behavior because then, oh my goodness, most of us won't get a good label. And that's what we do in life. We define each other we define ourselves by our behavior but the truth be told I believe by the grace of God and the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives that our behavior will come in alignment with the grace of God that's at work in each of us allow the light of God to come into those places of darkness allow the light of God to come into those places of woundedness and yes our behavior tell a story our behavior speak to our place 
of woundedness, a place of brokenness, a place of distortion. So yes, check your behavior. But as you do so, begin to make a decision that my behavior will not define me. I will choose to act according to God's word, according to God's light, and to who he says I am. He says, I am whole. He says, I am healed. He says, I am loved. He says, I am accepted. He says, I am loved. He says, I am chosen. He says, I'm the apple of his eye. Come on, somebody. He says, you are my beloved and I am yours. Come on, somebody. So self-love will translate into loving others. If you love you, you will love me. I've often said this, so when you quote this, please say, Sandra Valentine said it. I believe with all my heart that your imperfection hinder you from loving me perfectly. My imperfections hinder me from loving you perfectly. So yes, I may say I love you, and maybe I do, but how that love is translated whether it comes purely or distortedly, is really back to the root. And if the roots are corrupt, if the roots are distorted, guess what? The fruit will be. Guess what? The manifestation of what you see in my life will show the rottenness of my roots. So what's my capacity to love? It's rooted in how much self-love I am walking in. What's my capacity to love? What's my love quotient? It's rooted in how much I know I am love. It's how much I know that I can just be. I don't have to do. We are human beings, not human doings. All right? And so I need to say that to myself again. Let me say that just for me. Sandra, you are a human being, not a human doing. So God is calling us to recognize that we've been made by him, made in his image to love and be loved. It is a basic human need to, to be loved, to belong, to be connected. Genesis 2 and 18, it is not good for man to be alone. I know God spoke it in the context of his union with uh, Adam and Eve, but I believe Truly, whether you're single, married, divorced, remarried, whatever, widowed, listen, whatever your marital status, you and I need to know that it's not good to walk alone. God wants us connected properly. God wants us in healthy relationships. God wants us knitted. And the truth is you're going to be whole and healed and, and well in as much as you are deeply connected. So my prayer for you and my prayer for myself is that we would find our tribe. We will find those people that we can walk in relationship with and they can respect, they can honor, and they can esteem us. We don't need to be in relationships where we are constantly feeling afraid and suspicious and, and, and we, are being shamed, we are being shamed and we, we feel put down and we be, feel belittled. We don't need to be in those relationships. You know, we don't need to be around those people. We need to be around people who will tell us the truth, yes? Because I need to know the truth. And I, I believe as you tell me the truth, I can grow and become more. So you can speak the truth to me, but do so in love. I can speak the truth to you, but let me do so in love. Ephesians 4 and 15. Truth needs to be spoken, but it needs to be undergirded by love. So... What is your love quotient? What is your capacity to love? It is rooted in your love for yourself. It is root. God, mo good morning, Joanna. It is rooted in your capacity to be kind to you, to say good things to yourself. Tell yourself, wow, you didn't do, um, you didn't make it this time, but guess what? You can do it again. You'll make it again. Keep trying. Keep going. You know, every single day, cheer yourself on. I love the weights you're lifting, Johanna, and you're saying, yeah, I'm a warrior, I'm a champion. You go. You keep pressing. Press against 
you know, that disease that wants to keep you down. Press against that mindset that wants to oppress you. Press against it and say, I am going to be all God has called me to be. God bless you, Maggie. God bless you, Nilder. You're coming towards the end of the broadcast. But guess what? You can always listen once it's posted. And I encourage you to share these videos with your friends because I believe that too many of us are walking around deficient in love. Too many of us are walking around, you know, just hungry for love because we don't know what it is to be loved. We don't know what it is to be. God bless you, Rob. God bless you. Hi. Wow. Good to see so many of you on today. So I'm done for today. Like the video, share the video, and go back to parts one, two, three, because this is part four of what is your love quotient. They're all on the page, and furthermore, you can go to Sandra Valentine Ministries' um, YouTube channel, and I upload the videos at some point during the day so you can watch them and share them on WhatsApp, on Messenger, wherever. Just let somebody know, hey... You are loved. Tell them, share some love and give some love. Friends, I trust that some things, something that was said today is helping you. I trust that something that is being shared in these broadcasts is being beneficial and in your life and that you are examining your capacity to love, uh, to, to give love, to receive love. You are, you are examining and measuring your love quotient, knowing that it is the bond for everything else it is the foundation for everything else because where there is love everything will flourish everything else will blossom so god bless you i'll see you next monday for monday morning manner but on wednesday we have a time of prayer right here on wednesdays at noon so see you then wednesday is our next live broadcast with prayer at the well father i just thank you for my friends today I thank you that you have made each of us in your image, in your likeness, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have not made junk, that you have not made, you know, anything that is this, you know, to be discarded, but you have made us, God, to reflect your beauty and your image. And so I bless each uh, viewer today, those who are on right now and those who will watch later. I bless them, Father, and I pray for the capacity. I pray for the ability to receive uh -huh, all of the love that God has for them and that, Father, where there's been holes that have leaked out the love, that, God, you would go in and heal the hearts, heal the brokenness, heal the distortion, and give us an increased ability, an increased capacity to hold that love, to embrace that love, and therefore, God, we will be able to pour it out to others. The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. And Lord, we thank you for that in Christ's name. Bless you. You have a love-filled week. A love-filled week ahead of you. I pray that love will come to you and you will give love. Give what you want. Share what you desire. Go ahead. Do some random act of kindness this week. Send a card. Send a text. Send Send, a, send whatever, a love note. Just let somebody else in your life know, I love you and I'm thinking of you. Oh, send me one too. I'd love it. Thank you. God bless.